Example 5. For this example, I want to look at solving a solution on a restricted interval. If you're restricted, if you're told solve the equation, and you're given some trigonometric, trigonometric equation on the interval of 0 to 2 pi, that's a full circle. And what you should know is that all trig functions have two distinct solutions on a full circle. And there are very, very few um, special exceptions to this. And let's go back to our unit circle so we can see those. In particular, this is when any trig, or when sine and cosine equal one. Because on a full circle, or negative one, cosine equals one only at this point, and cosine equals negative one only at this point. Similarly, sine equals 1 only at the top, and sine equals negative 1 only at the bottom. So those are your special points that only occur once on the circle. But back to the problem at hand. What this tells us, though, is just we're not going to have to add the 2 to pi times n. We want all our numbers to be in between 0 and 2 pi, or if you feel more comfortable, 0 and approximately 6.28. Let's solve this. So we have sine of x minus 1 equals cosine x. First thing that's going to cause me a problem is I've got both a sine and a cosine here. I want to rewrite in terms of just one of them. To do that, I'm going to end up using my Pythagorean identity that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. I'm going to do that by squaring both sides. This gives me sine squared x minus 2 sine x plus 1 equals cosine squared x. can then use my Pythagorean identity and replace cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. This leaves the left side alone. And now this is looking better. I have everything in terms of sine, and I have both a squared and a first power sign. So now we're going to solve it like a quadratic. I get, let's see, 2 sine squared x minus 2 sine x. Oh, actually, this is really pretty. Equals 0. I can factor out a sine. I can actually factor out 2 sine. 2 sine x, that leaves behind sine x minus 1 equals 0. Now I have two equations to solve. And each equation will have two distinct solutions. Most likely, unless it's one of our special equations. Alright, first one is 2 sine of x equals 0. This gives me sine of x equals 0. You can use your unit circle or your calculator and realize that that occurs at 0 and pi. So x equals 0 or x equals pi. For my second equation, sine of x e minus 1 equals 0. This gives me sine of x equals 1. Okay, this is our special situation. This is the one that only occurs once in the circle. And that's up here at pi over 2. We get pi over 2 for this answer. And there are three solutions, 0, pi over 2, and pi. Or if you prefer the decimals, we get 0, let's see, pi over 2 is about 1.5708, and pi is about 3.1416 all in radians. Either solution's correct. It really doesn't matter which one you use for me. Especially if when you get to this point you decide to plug in sine inverse of zero, your calculator will pop out a decimal. Or in this case zero. But here if you want to plug in sine inverse of one, your calculator should give you the 1.5708.